everyone, welcome to Deeds Power of Work presentation. Today we're going to be talking about budgeting advice. I know it's something that we tend to struggle with and it's a good skill to have. So let's get started. Some daily budgeting advice that we have are some six advices. First off, let's create a zero base budget. What does this mean? We try to figure out the average of how much money you will be making for that specific month. We write down all the expenses for that month, income versus the expenses. Do not freak out if it changes on the course of the month, but that way you know how much you're starting with versus how much you expect to um, spend that month. Now, if you're married or you have a team or you live in a household with there are several incomes, I definitely suggest to budget together. Plan together the finances and plan for the near future and the long run together. So all the expenses can come together in your budgeting plan and you know how much as a team you have together. If you live by yourself, you're single, I do recommend you finding someone you're comfortable about sharing this with, your budget and your goals, so you have like some sort of accountable partner on this journey. Third is your budget every single month. So of course, every single month is different, you know, including events, birthday, vacations, school events, whatever this may be. But add a category that you may need that for that every month. Try to think ahead for your current month and the month ahead so you have an idea of what it is that you're looking for for your budgeting. Try to have a savings for accidents and inconvenience if possible, but don't freak out if you're not there yet. It's just something that we advise to have in the long run. Then start with the most important categories first. So of course we have your given first, then we have some savings and something called the four wall, which is our main needs, which is like food, housing, transportation, your utilities. And then we have the rest, which can include, you know, your dev, your subscriptions, gym, whatever this may be. Prioritize on the rest depending on your needs. So if you have your rest list, you may want to prioritize your debt or you may want to prioritize your medical bills, whatever this may be, but make sure that you have them on a, in a way that you know which is the most important and what you may be able to let go if need be. Number five, pay off your debt. Put out whatever you can and try to put that uh, income that you had set for that stuff and try to set it up for the debt that you may have. Also, don't be afraid to trim the budget on each month depending the necessities. This will come together eventually. It's not a long-term thing you have to do. Let's try to make a schedule, right? You can set it up weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, depending on what works for you, you know, whenever you get paid or whatever uh, works best for you. But try to have a schedule where you can go ahead and see your budget and how much you, uh, you're planning to schedule for that week or that month, depending on your decision. Track your pro uh, your progress. And I we say this because... Budgeting can be pretty stressful at first. You see all those numbers. And if you track your wins, even the small ones, it gives you that encouragement of like, this is coming together and you'll eventually feel like it is a natural thing. Then we have uh, what it's called a miscellaneous category. And this helps us track the little things that we forget every week. The week comes up and you have expenses that did not cross your mind before, that's okay. You can just put it in there, how much you spent, and you can consider it for next month. Then cut up your credit cards. They're obviously very useful, but once you're budgeting, especially if you're struggling with um, finances, try to only use debit so do you don't have to be overwhelmed with debt knocking on your door. Use cash where you tend to overspend. So this kind of gives you a, this is how much we have. That's our, you know, our $50 bill and we cannot surpass that. But it gives you like a limit when you know that there should be one. With comparisons, of course, this is budgeting can give you the 
look what everybody else is doing. Look at everybody's like perfect life. And here I am struggling with my numbers. That's okay. You know, live life and enjoy it based on your budget. You can still have good moments and enjoy your life on all of this. You just may have to do it depending on where you are at certain times. And give yourself grace because sometimes, you know, some months and categories are all over the place. That's okay. You know, it doesn't have to always work as planned, especially when we're beginning. It can be very struggling, but if you can like have that or have inconsistency in your income and that just freaks you out, that's okay. Like that can just, you know, you're learning the process. So don't be hard on yourself. Budgeting when you don't make enough. If this is you, you can try this method called bourbon budget. What we're going to do to bourbon budget is at first we write down our why and your story. You know this better than anyone. Why are you budgeting? What are your current needs and your story? Where you come from, where you're at, and where you want to get. So once you have that very established on your own goals and your own life, you can start ahead and go and create a list. Where is your income for this month? And what do you think next month will be? So if you're struggling, maybe that each month looks very differently and maybe sometimes in stream cases. So you can like get an idea of what is like your lowest and why you think it's going to come next. Then we have bills and fixed expenses. This means the ones that have to stay 110%. So usually, you know, our bills, rent, food, utilities, uh, school, whatever it is that you may apply to your family. And then we have the variable expenses that may change from each month or that it also is something that we don't necessarily need. Then we have our debt. Prioritize your debt depending on the interest, highest to lowest. This helps us get rid of those ones with highest um, interest before. And this will help us in the long run. So we just like clog the debt. And then cut and minimize expenses. Cut, lower, keep. So first we go through all of our lists and our viable expenses and we get rid of all of those that we know this month we can live without, you know, that Disney Plus for that month can go for, for a second. And then we can lower on some that we know that, well, we definitely need to keep this, but maybe we can try, you know, a cheaper version of that situation. And then they definitely keep. This helps us figure out if you have a spending problem or an income problem. So after doing our cut, lower, keep, you still feel that you're struggling. This means that it's definitely an income problem and that's okay. Let's try to understand a little bit our budgeting process. So figure out your income after tax. So you get your regular paycheck and the amount you receive is probably it. But then, you know, there is some automatic uh, deductions that you have maybe on savings, health and insurance. So try to add those back up and give yourself a true picture of how much you're spending on certain things and in your savings. So you can really know where money is going. Of course, if you have a different type of income or you make money on psychics or you get paid by weekly, depending on your situation, try to, you know, subtract anything that reduce, um, reduces it on like the net income you have each month. Choose a budget plan. There are many different budget plans, just like the one I just showed you of the bare bone and one I'm going to show you um, in a second, but be, know that there are many ones and there is going to be one for you that covers all your needs and some of your wants. And the key about like savings is just, like having an emergency fund and think about your future so you feel like encouraged to do so. Some other uh, budgeting plans include the envelope system and the serial uh, based budget. Again, track your progress and record your spending and if you tend to be bad on doing these yourself on like Excel, for example, there are online budgeting and saving tools that make this easier for you. Automate your savings. So 
if you automate as much as possible in your money or you just like you know having your bank account and that just kind of like go somewhere else the second you put it in your bank account this kind of makes it easier for you and gives you like that minimum effort of like oh good like i i already know that this month my five dollars are going to my uh savings or my hundred or depending on where you're at and again, obviously, an accountability partner will, or support system can really help you or like help you make decisions on these kind of circumstances of like, how much should I save? How much like if you feel you're struggling with this whole process? Practice budget management. So you have your income, of course, your expenses and your priorities, and these will change over time and they can even change month to month. So try to actively manage your budget, you know, revising it regularly, maybe once a quarter, maybe each month, depending on your situation. But if you're struggling to stick up your, your plan, try these budgeting tips that I'm going to give you. This is a really good example of the budgeting plan and a really good budgeting tip. And it's called the 50-30-20 budget plan, which it allows you to have up to 50% of your income for needs. This is after taxes, of course. So this is where we include our groceries, housing, basic utilities, transportation, insurance, whatever it is for you that it's your complete basic uh, needs for your family and you can add minimum loan payments anything beyond minimum it kind of goes to our category of savings and repayment now um if you absolutely feel that your essentials overshoot that 50 percent mark you may need to dip into your ones portion of your budget for a while you know to make sure that everything sticks to our budget but it's not the end of the world you know it will adjust in your spendings and even if you're like necessities kind of fall into revising some stuff or like my car broke down this month you know it's just a little bit of like that changing in our 50 30 20 but it eventually will make sense and you get to that point where your 50 30 20 goes smoothly on our uh, 30% we have your wants. So separating wants from needs can be difficult sometimes because we might be like, I definitely need this. And then you realize that you might be able to live without it or to live with a different version of that need. So in general, think of needs, obviously, as Things that include, you know, dinner outs, gifts, travel, entertainment, all of these things that are not necessarily essential for you to live or work. And then commit the rest of your 20% in savings and debt repayment. So use 20% of your after tax income to put something away for that unexpected events and say for your future and pay off your debt. So make sure you think of like, a bigger picture when you're making this 20 on why it's essential right now. So maybe right now paying the debt is like more important than having uh, the savings, but try to see the whole picture. And, you know, maybe you want to take a little bit for your wants to have more for your savings and uh, the repayment that truly really depends on you. But this is like, when you, you want to accomplish more of the passing goals with each month that you try your budgeting out. So if you have any other questions, I'm open here for you. We'd love to give you more budgeting advice and help you in your journey. That's all for right now. Thank you. Awesome, thank you.